Hello and welcome to a brand new series on the channel, The Real Deal, or as it's probably meant to be said, The Real Deal, but it's going to be annoying to say that all the time. So The Real Deal is here. I can't wait to show you this. Let's roll the intro. Hello and welcome to the Real Deal and we're here in a new series with a brand new club. Now I sort of put little hints out there across the past few days uh, suggesting which team we're going to be. I said we're in Spain, I said it's called the Real Deal into people in the Discord. Uh, I gave a few hints out there and a couple of people did guess it. So to everyone who guessed Real Oviedo, congratulations, you're very, very good at guessing. So Real Oviedo is the new team we're going to be taking charge of. They're in the Spanish second division, the Segunda division, and uh, hopefully we can take them to new heights. Uh, I'm about three quarters of the way through pre-season or so. I've been playing everyone, trying to learn everyone's names, uh, trying to work out the best formation to use and trying to work out like who is the best players and stuff like in the squad. So I've been busy doing that, as I say, about three quarters of the way through pre-season now. I think I'm at the stage now where I can sort of introduce you to some key players and start to talk you through the series a little bit. So first of all then, why did I decide to take over Real Oviedo? Well, they've got a pretty interesting history, uh, recent history as well I've got to say. Uh, I think in the early 90s or the 80s and 90s they were a top division side in Spain, pretty decent. I think in the early 90s they were in the Europa League for a season or two perhaps. Uh, so they were a pretty decent side. Uh, then they got relegated in 2000-2001. That's when they had their first financial difficulties, which only get relegated from the Spanish second division all the way down to the, the fourth tier, actually, through all their financial issues and whatnot. Uh, eventually got promoted again into the second division B, which is the third tier of Spanish football, but then got relegated again uh, in 2006-2007. Promoted it in 2008-2009. Uh, stayed pretty comfortable in the second division B, which is pretty good, but they had some more financial issues. Uh, I think, essentially... A long story short was that the owner just left, took all the money with him. So they basically had to raise those money to avoid administration and dissolving, basically. So what they did was they had a huge global push for investors, basically, and just people from all over the world invested what money they had into the club to keep it afloat, basically. So it's got a lot of international ties, loads of people from the UK, all over Europe, all over the world, basically, invested in the club to keep it afloat. With the money that they had, they were able to uh, mount a promotion push in 2014-15 season, won the league there, which is pretty good and have been in the second division ever since, finishing ninth and 8th, retrospectively. So that's pretty decent. So they have a pretty interesting history in terms of that, stuff, especially the recent history. They're also known for pretty decent youth development. Santi Cazorla was there, Michu, uh, Juan Mata, Adrian. They all started their careers at Real Oviedo. So the whole point that I want to do with this is really, really focus on youth talent and youth production, see if we can get some really, really good youth players coming through. Try not to rely on a transfer window and things like that. Just really focus on the youth development. So I kind of want it to be a youth development sort of save. We may struggle with that over the first few seasons, though, uh, as we only have uh, average youth facilities. So we may have to try and, and boost that a little bit. We've done really well off uh, season tickets so far. If we look at income, season tickets. We made £4 million off season tickets this year. So I'm actually thinking maybe the board, right off the bat, in you know nearly in the pre-season, maybe... This extra money we've got from the season tickets, we've got a good projection as well. Four million this season, seven million next season, nearly ten million this season afterwards. I reckon if we ask the board, maybe they will build better youth facilities. When I joined the club, I was allowed to make a few uh, philosophy changes, and uh, there weren't any philosophies in place. But I said, can you add in develop players using the club's youth system? So I think also having that as well as on the money, I think they may actually let me invest in the youth facilities and things like that. So if we just do it now, uh, facilities, improve youth facilities. I'd like for us to improve youth facilities at the club to enable young players to reach their potential and challenge for first team role. Let's just say it, shall we? You've not been here very long. We're not doing it. Okay. Well, you know, it was worth a try, I suppose. Worth a try. Didn't, didn't quite work out. It also might not work out as well if we don't get any decent youth players coming in. That's going to be a big issue. All right, this is just a squad that I've picked for the next friendly. It's probably not going to be like the, the main squad or, or things like that. But I do want to take you through a few characters that I've already identified as going to be pretty decent players and probably will be stars of the team. Aaron Niguez is probably the star man of pre-season so far. Inside forward on the left-hand side of the pitch. He has played phenomenally well in pre-season. Uh, four appearances, three substitutes appearances eight goals four assists he's done pretty good for himself i've got to say although i'm not entirely sure how he pronounced his surname because all the accents like the squiggly line above the n the the accent on the i 
I feel like it may just be easier to nickname him to Aaron at some point, but we'll we'll wait and see. If someone knows how to say it in the comment section, they can tell me. He's got some decent attributes on him. Uh, obviously, he played very well in the games he's played. Uh, has played, he just joined us actually. I mean, I didn't sign him, but was in the squad for real life. I'm using the database from the start of the season rather than the January transfer update uh, because I just prefer it basically. Has got top division experience in Spain with Elche and in Portugal with Braga. So he's a pretty decent player, I've got to say. He was with Rangers for a little while, which is interesting, but started with Valencia and just sort of moved on a bit. So he's a decent player for us. Hopefully he'll do just as well in season as he has done in pre-season. Katungo is a left back and right back, 20 years old from Uruguay. Uh, usually on the left hand side, but it's playing right back at the moment because our, our normal right back is picked up an injury all through pre-season. But he's been doing very well. Uh, four appearances, two subs and two assists so far, but he's, he's, he's playing the games have been pretty decent. He gets lots of chances and creates lots of chances, makes a few key passes every game. So I think he's going to be quite an important player this season. Juan Forlin is probably the best player at the club. He's the only four-star current ability player that we have, uh, which does make him good enough for the first division, which is very interesting. Hopefully that'll be quite decent. Uh, but as you can see, he's pretty decent across the board. Technicals, maybe not the best, but where they are needed is heading, tackling, marking. They are very, very good, actually. And, he's, you know, he's a very, very solid player. 29 years old from Argentina. He's probably at his peak, to be fair, right now, I've got to say. He's on a lot of money per week compared to the rest of the squad but it's probably justified, to be fair. I don't know if we're going to use him at centre-back, though. I think he may be used more as a CDM, because he's pretty good there as well, I've got to say. Got some good stats for that, but we'll have to sort of work it out. We know we've got some other CDMs, uh, but I'm sort of trying them in pre-season, see if they can do the job just as well. If not, it'll probably go centre-defence, I've got to say. All through pre-season, this guy, Miguel Linares, has been the star striker for us. We've only got two strikers, or out-and-out -out strikers, really. Uh, and one's 33, and this guy's 34. This guy was looking the better of the two of them, but has now damaged his cruciate ligaments and is out for seven to nine months. And on £4,000 a week for nine months doing nothing, I feel like it's not really worth having him around. Um, and so I kind of want to sack him, but I don't think I can do. So what I think I want to do actually is have a chat with him saying, can you become a coach instead? So, I mean, I don't know how we actually do that. Uh, recommend future possible staff role, maybe. Let's do that, shall we? I mean, we can have him as a, as a good striking coach, maybe. Uh, I think he should consider becoming a coach. It's something he would consider, but he's focusing on his football right now. He's out of contract at the end of the season, and he's injured all season. Why is he not focusing on that now? All right, I think I'm going to have some arguments with this guy. I'm not going to get on with him very well at all. All right, he's injured for 79 months, so surely we can send him on a coaching course. We should improve the quality of coaching by funding a course for him. The chairman agrees. Is he going to accept it, though? He has accepted it. Okay, that's good. Four months' time, he'll have his National Sea Licence. Maybe then we can offer him a new contract as a coach. Uh, in terms of the under-19 squad, a lot of them from the first team are actually here as well, uh, just because we said playing the under-19s for fitness as well. So if we actually look at the actual under-19 players, I guess, if we look from, from Felix down to, to Alex, these are the under-19 players. Some of them are decent. We've got two guys on trial here, which may sign at some point. They look pretty decent. I signed Felix and Rumbo, actually. Uh, I've signed these two. So Felix, I've brought in as a striker, youth striker, 18 years old. Uh, could be pretty decent in the future. Four-star current ability. Of course, if we look at that uh, falling guy, four-star current ability is, is first division for our standard of football right now. So if he gets to that four-star current potential ability, this guy, Felix, then he'll be a first division quality player, I think. Same thing with Rumbo. We brought him in on a free transfer as well after a pretty successful trial. He's got the four-star potential as well, so he could be a decent first division player in the future as well. As you can see for the rest of them, though, that we actually have contracted, none of them look amazing, which is going to be a bit difficult, I think, in terms of, you know, we've got to focus on bringing youth players through. The current bunch don't look fantastic. And uh, the best ones are the ones we've brought in. So technically, they're not Oviedo youth players. We've got a B team as well, which is quite cool, I've got to say. Uh, in terms of actual ability, two stars are the best. Uh, a few players with some decent potential out there. Borgia is the best. I tried to bring him back, actually, uh, from loan, but he, we can't recall him yet this season. He's got a season on loan at Twila uh, in the division below us, I believe, maybe. So he might have a decent career there, or a good season there, at least. But uh, hopefully, he'll come through and we can actually make him a decent player for it. In terms of sticking to this youth system type thing, there are two players in the first team squad that I've brought up who actually are proper Oviedo players through and through from the youth system. So it's Asa Gomez, who's a, an attacking midfielder, two-star current ability, three-star potential. He, he could be all right, but I just don't understand where he plays. It says he's a natural attacking midfielder, but if you look at here, he can't really play anywhere particularly well, and he can't particularly play on the wings very well or in central midfield. So I don't understand where I'm meant to play him other than on the bench. The other player is Yosin. He comes in as well, 20 years old, Spanish. Uh, he's got three and a half star potential, so he might be a little bit better if he reaches that potential 
Uh, but again, like, it's a bit difficult. He comes in as, like, the, the seventh best centre-back we've got. And if we want to stick to this mantra of playing youth players, we'll have to significantly weaken our defence and attacking midfields if we want to use them both. So... Um, it might be a bit tricky, I think. In terms of the uh, Spanish second division, the predicted table puts us 10th overall, which is decent, I've got to say. The board wants us to finish top half. However, if we want to use the youth players properly, I, d I don't know if top half is possible, really. I'd rather not get promoted in this first season, really. I'd rather as, like have two or three seasons maybe in the second division, developing some youth players to come through who actually may be good enough for the first division. And then when we get promoted, we can start using them in the first division but, you know, it might not work out like that. We could have some absolutely rubbish youth intakes and then we have to rely on transfers. So then the whole idea of a youth system in place is a bit pointless, which would be a bit annoying, but we'll have to wait and see. So that then is basically the premise of the Real or the Real deal. I'm going to go and finish pre-season now, but don't worry because the, the first proper, proper episode with games in it is going to be coming out in two hours time. So this comes out at six o'clock, uh, the next one will be out at eight o'clock. So if you're watching this like at 10 to 8, the next episode's out by now, I'm sure. So uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. I'm really, really excited for this. I know a lot of you enjoyed the Lincoln series and I got a lot of nice comments on there saying how much you enjoyed it. So I feel a bit of pressure to live up to that and try and make it as good as the Lincoln one. But hopefully once we get going, we learn the players' names and we learn who's good and get some good stories going. I think this could be even better than the Lincoln Loco. So thank you very much for watching. If you're excited for the series, make sure you do drop a huge like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more Foot Manager action so you don't miss out on any of the real deal videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in a little bit.